video is uh, set to get you ready for the Chapter 9 test, which is all the sequences and series. And the focus of this video is really at the end of the chapter. Some of the things that maybe we haven't worked with as long because we did so much with all the series tests, but the Taylor and McLaurin has just happened at the end. You don't have any quizzes in your folder that will help you for this. So hopefully this video helps you see different types of questions. I have four different problems, and all of these problems came from an AP prep book, and they were all listed in their example of what a BC test would look like. So that's where these are coming from. And a majority of the questions are designed to be done without a calculator, uh, with the exception of the last one, and we'll see that when we get to it. So the first question, we are given the first four terms of our Taylor expansion for the function centered at 3. And there you see the first four terms. And we want to figure out the value of the second derivative at 3. So when we're looking at the second derivative, we know we are focused on the term that is the second power, because our powers and our derivatives always go together. So what you want to think about is that if you take the second derivative at 3 times x minus 3 squared over 2 factorial, you should get that term that we're looking at, the one that I pointed to. Well, this would be the x minus 3 squared. That's in each piece. So I'm kind of ignore that for a second. I'm just going to look at the coefficient. So whatever the second derivative of 3 is over 2, 2 factorial is just 2, it should be equal to negative 7 thirds, because that's the coefficient of this second degree term. A lot of times I'll write it more as an equation, a proportion. Say, well, I'm looking for x. We'll call the second derivative at 3x over 2 equals negative 7 over 3. Cross multiply, I get 3x equals negative 14. So that means that second derivative was negative 14 thirds. And we've done a couple questions like this in class, just kind of the idea that you understand how we form a Taylor polynomial, wh where the pieces come from, and then working from there. So this question, uh, usually it's a multiple choice question, and it is usually on a non-calculator because there was nothing the calculator did for us. Next one. Next one wants to figure out the approximation, which expression would approximate the area under the curve using a Maclaurin approximation, so we know we're centered at 0. Uh, of a function e to the x squared from 0 to 1. So the first thing I want to write down is actually from earlier in calculus, the idea that we area is the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x squared. But I don't know how to integrate e to the x squared, which is why they're asking you to do it as a Maclaurin approximation. So what that means is we need to figure out our Maclaurin polynomial for e to the x squared. Well, we know our polynomial for e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over uh, 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial. And that's as far as I'm going to go, because if you look at your choices, we have four terms. So I'm going to stop there. If I need to go further later, I'll pick back up. And then I know that if I want the polynomial for e to the x squared, then all I do is I replace all of my x's with x squared. So I still have a 1, but now I have an x squared. An x squared squared gives me x to the fourth over 2. And an x squared cubed gives me an x to the sixth over 6. So this is a polynomial that will approximate e to the x squared. Now I can think of that as what I'm trying to integrate. So instead of saying the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x squared, I'm going to say, well, here's a polynomial that's a great approximation of it. And let's integrate that, because that's something that I can do. I don't need to calculate. It's very easy to integrate by hand. So the integral of 1 is x. The integral of x to the square, squared is x to the third over 3. And then x to the fifth over 10. And then x to the seventh over 42. Put your boundaries in, and the nice thing is when you put 0 in, you get 0. So it only matters what happens when I put 1 in. So when I put 1 in, I get 1 plus a third plus a tenth plus a 42nd. And looking at this, this was a, obviously a multiple choice question, because you see all the choices that were there. And the correct choice here is A. And again, this would be a multiple choice non-calculator. There was nothing that the calculator did for us. If you were allowed to use your calculator, you could actually integrate from 0 to 1 of e to the x squared, making your calculator do the integration for you, and see what your answer is and see if they're close. But because of the way they asked you to answer the question, they're much more concerned with the terms from the integrating the Maclaurin polynomial than looking at the original function. This one is very similar to one we would have done in class. We are trying to come up with the first four non-zero terms of the approx Taylor approximation 
for the derivative of f, and f is given as x sine of x, and we are centered around 0, so they call it a Taylor approximation. It's actually a Maclaurin approximation because we're centered at 0. A couple ways to do this. We do not have to do a product rule. We talked about this in class. That actually makes it more complex. What I want to do instead is think of what my Taylor series was with sine. And Taylor series with sine was x minus x to the third over 3 factorial, which I'll just put as 6, plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, which is 120. And then I, we should go out a little further because they want four terms. So then we have minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial, which I'm just going to write as 7 factorial for now. Um, this was also one that you weren't supposed to use your calculator, so I'm going to kind of leave it like that. And you could also just leave it as 3 factorial, 5 factorial, 7 factorial. When I want to write the approximation for x times sine of x, then all I'm doing is multiplying every single term by x. So I will have x squared. I'll have an x to the fourth over 3 factorial, or you could say 6. And then an x to the sixth over 5 factorial, or you could say 120, minus an x to the eighth over 7 factorial. And then the question one is to know about the derivative. So now that I have this as my approximation, I need to derive this. So this is my, my representation of my function. My derivative then would be derivative of x squared is 2x minus 4x to the third over 3 factorial plus 6x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus 8x to the seventh over 7 factorial. They wanted the first four. Uh, we do not need to simplify it. This question also was a multiple choice. I just didn't take the time to list the choices. Uh, but when you looked at the choices given, they did leave it in a factorial notation without doing any extra simplifying. And this was the answer they were looking for. The 2x minus 4x to the third over 3 factorial plus 6x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus 8x to the seventh over 7 factorial. So the idea is work with the basic Taylor approximation that you know. Sine, cosine, and e to the x are the ones that show up the most. Once we have that, we can manipulate. We can multiply it by something. We can add something. We can divide. We can subtract. We then can turn around and integrate. We can turn around and derive. So you're kind of seeing that in all of these problems we're looking at. The last one was the only one that came from uh, a part of a test that allowed you to use a calculator. You really don't use it to the end. This was an FRUQ question. Uh, I just copied A and B. C wasn't something that we really we had discussed much of, so I just took the first two parts of this FRQ and put it up here. So we have a Taylor expansion uh, for a particular function centered at 4. And we have, not only do we have the first few terms, but we also have the general term of it. First question wants to know the values of x for which the function would converge. So that is your ratio test. And you've seen this. We did one in class. Usually the ratio test is one of the first things that ask, they ask you for. You usually get a lot of points for doing the ratio test. So we have the limit as we go to infinity. And we're using this when I'm focusing on my ratio test. So I'm going to have x minus 4 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 times 2 to the n over x minus 4 to the n. When I simplify this, I'm going to be left with an x minus 4 on top. I'm going to be left with a 2 on the bottom. Uh, usually, they'll keep the absolute value bar, so you can do that. We know with my ratio test, the only way to converge is for the answer to be less than 2. So we say that my limit is the x minus 4 over 2, and we want that value to be sorry less than 1. I'm not sure why I wrote a 2. I was skipping ahead in my head. So I'm going to write that this limit has to be x minus 4. Get my pen back. So now my screen is frozen. There we go. x minus 4 divided by 2 has to be less than 1 because my ratio test will converge if I get a value less than 1, and it will diverge if I get a value bigger than 1. I need to get the x minus 4 by itself, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So I'm going to have x minus 4 is less than 2. So what that tells me is my center is a 4. I knew that from the beginning. My radius of convergence is 2. And my interval that I'm working with, they call it the interior of the interval, will go from 2 to 6. Now the question becomes, what actually happens at the endpoints? Because we have now the interior of the interval of convergence, but does it converge at the ends? To figure that out, we need to, one at a time, take your endpoints and put them back into this original power notation. 
my marker just keeps freezing on me. So I'm going to start with 2. If I put 2 in, I'll work up here, I have a little more space, I get negative 2 to the n over 2 to the n, which I can divide because they're both to the nth power, and I get negative 1 to the n. And that is a divergent series. It's a divergent series because of the nth term test. The limit of that series does not exist because it continues to go back and forth. If you look at the limit of the series ignoring the alternating, the limit is actually 1 because it is just, you get rid of the negative, it's just 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So that is diverging. So we are not including 2 as part of my interval of convergence. If I check 6, I actually have a very similar thing happen here. If I check 6, I 6 minus 4, I get 2 to the n over 2 to the n which is just 1 to the n, or 1, which is also a diverging series for the same reason, the nth term test. My limit of this is not 0. I end up getting 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. doesn't even alternate, so this also diverges. So we can go back and say that my interval convergence was just everything between 2 and 6, not including the endpoints. You do want to take the time to check the endpoints. Even in a situation, if this is on the AP test, where both endpoints were divergent, just because your answer to the less than x is less than 6 is right, if you don't check the endpoints and consider that possibility, you will not get full credit. So you really want to take the time to do that. Uh, the best problems are the ones that are always converging or never converging, because then you don't have to worry about endpoints, but those also tend to be worth less points. And then the last part of this wants to know the first three non-zero terms and the general term of the derivative of f, so we're going to go back to the original function and derive, and then we're going to use that to estimate the value of the derivative at 3.9, which should be close because 3.9 is very close to the center 4. This is where the calculator comes in. So my first three terms, if I look up here, well, the derivative of the first term is 0 because the derivative of 1 is 0, so that's not going to count as a term. The derivative of my second term, so let me start writing this down, the derivative of my second term is a half. Derivative of my next term, power out front, power one less, so I'm going to get a half times x minus 4. Derivative of my next term when I bring the power out front is going to be 3 eighths times x minus 4 squared. That's as many uh, terms as I need as far as I need three non-zero terms, so I'm good there. My general term is going to be doing the same thing, power out front, power one less, so it's x minus 4 to the n minus 1, and it will still be over the 2 to the n. That does not change, because I'm taking my derivative in terms of x. So very quick as far as just power out front, power 1 less with that. To finish it, it want to know what is the value of the derivative at 3.9 using this approximation. So here's when you need a calculator. So you'd have a half plus a half times 3.9 minus 4 plus 3 eighths times 3.9 minus 4 squared. Um, I did this on my calculator already, so to save yourself some time, I mean, you can check your own work to see if you're getting it right, but it ends up being 0.45. You can either do 3 or 4. If you truncate, it would be 0.453. If you round, it would be 0.454. So hopefully this video gives you a little bit of variety. It's talking about how we come up with some of these Taylor and McLaurin polynomials, how we apply them to other things when we're multiplying or dividing, how we use them to derive, how we use them to integrate, how we use them with uh, in terms of our ratio test to figure out when they converge, and how we use them to make an estimate. So a lot of different things happening in one video, and hopefully this really helps you get ready for the Chapter 9 test.